So most people um, think, or they get into non-duality, or they get into the subject, and they're just fixated on becoming enlightened, and they're fixated on when they arrive and arriving to this enlightenment. Um, and as soon as they hear about non-duality or this subject, they want to put the clothes on of non-duality. They want to suddenly step into being enlightened or being something more than what they are and really non-duality is um, a crumbling of an illusion it's not a getting of something but the the person looks at it always until the end as putting something on I put something on I get something and I can understand speaking in that way but this isn't about you becoming something and this isn't some easy fix, um, because I speak, I suppose, quite to the point, non-duality. People want to listen once or twice and be, that's it, I got it. Um, and you're listening, waiting for that moment when you get it. And it's not like that. Actually, what happens... Is there a stopping of a running away from yourself? It's not, beco it's not becoming a better, improved version of you. It's that the you stops running. There's this really beautiful story in Buddhism. Um, a Gulimala uh, lived in the forest and he killed people that went through the forest and every time he killed someone he took off their little pinky and put it around his neck as a necklace so he'd hang it on a necklace and he had 99 of them and he came to the conclusion when I get to 100 I will stop then one day the Buddha was walking through the forest and all the local villagers said don't go through the forest um, the Gula Mala lives there and he will kill you but the Buddha carried on walking he walked and walked and Gulamala saw him and began to chase him, to kill him. And as he chased the Buddha, he couldn't catch up. He chased and he chased and he chased and he was exhausted. And finally he shouted out, stop, stop, you're moving too fast, I can't catch up with you. And the Buddha replied, I'm perfectly still, it's you that's moving too fast. And at that apparently Gulamala woke up. It's such a beautiful story. But you don't come out with something. What could you possibly come out with? But you run and you run and you run and you chase. And this isn't about stopping seeking. To put effort into stop seeking would still be a you putting effort into it. But that energy just stops running. And when that energy stops running, when it stops trying to get to pleasure and avoid pain, there's often immense discomfort because it's so addicted to that game. It's completely addicted to the pleasures of the world. Pleasure will one day give me happiness, and it lives in this land of hope, hoping that it will get there. And it lives in a world of denial. So every time it feels a negative emotion, it always tells a story to compensate, to hope to get out of it. It's because of somebody's fault, it's because of something that happened in the world. And it tries its best. To never feel that emotion if it feels hurt or if it feels sad or if it feels vulnerable. Rather than the feeling of vulnerability, it's always saying, I've got to get enlightened. I wouldn't be feeling this if I was enlightened. Why am I feeling vulnerability? Or it will say, it's their fault. They shouldn't treat me that, like this. How dare they treat me like this? Who do they think they are? Always running, always living in a timeline. The Buddhists always used to say, <coughs> you've got to be in the moment. And I don't interpret it like that anymore. I used to think it was like that. But it's not that you've got to be in the moment. All there is, is the moment. It's just you that's in time. Who you think you are is in time. This is perfect, brilliant stillness. This is nothing experiencing itself. Silence experiencing itself. As sound. This is so wonderful. You want something special. You want something extraordinary. You don't want to sit on the sofa with nothing, having nothing, and that's what it means. 
There is nothing that could complete this more. Isn't there a thousand things you would like to complete this more, one of them being enlightenment? Do you really want to give up all your dreams? To have nothing? When the Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree, he came out after 40 days and 40 nights of Maya, the illusion, presenting heaven and hell, and they said to him, what did you get? And he said, nothing. And that's the most profound and beautiful answer there is. But to the you, but to someone, that's a disaster. I want something. I want enlightenment. I want bliss. How could nothing be God? How could nothing be freedom? But it totally is. Nothing is it. The suffering of the whole of humanity is the belief that something will give them God. Something will free them. There is nothing. And yet, simultaneously, there is everything.